in prayer, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, this is a prayer that I read at the Athletic Banquet, so if you're there, you're going to have to bear with me. If you weren't, uh, this will be your first time hearing it. Build me an athlete who will be strong enough to know when they are weak, and brave enough to face themselves when they are afraid. One who will be proud and unbending in honest defeat, and humble and gentle in victory. Build me an athlete whose heart will be clear, whose goal will be high, one who will learn to laugh, yet never forget how to weep. One who will reach into the future, yet never forget the past. Grant them humility, so that they may always remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, and the meekness of true strength. Build me an athlete who will know you, and that to know themselves through you is the foundational stone of knowledge. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Um, Athletics is uh, an important part of a uh, school, and uh, I'm very proud to uh, to welcome uh, Mr. Farr to the uh, program as a new athletic director. Uh, he teaches second grade here at Lords. And without further ado, uh, Mr. Farr is going to give you his view on uh, on where Lords athletics will will lead us into the future. All right, thanks, um, <coughs> I'm just going to go through slides. I've got a PowerPoint presentation that I just want to go through. Um, to the OLOL Athletics email fully once uh, the transition is made on July 1st. So, um, just a few things, what people want uh, their athletic program to look like and feel. First thing is uh, parents usually say something safe. Parents say competitive. Administrators say sportsmanlike. Athletes say fun and fair. Okay? And then all together you have safe, competitive, sports and like fun and fair. These five characteristics are what we want OLO, -O, excuse me, OLOL -O -L, athletics to be. And I think that's a huge part of it right there. Uh, Father Tim this morning in Mass, those of you who are there, kind of, he kind of touched on it a little bit too. You know, we want we want everything to kind of come together. Safe, competitive, sports and like fun and fair. We want everybody to try things. We don't want people to be discouraged, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but we want to encourage people to play sports. We want people to be a part of it. We want you as parents to be a, a part of this. We don't want everything to be separated. We want to bring it all together. So, did you know, I'm probably getting in your way, I'm not it. Research has shown that students in extracurricular activities have greater chances for success during adulthood. That is the premise for the creation and continued existence of athletic and activity programs. Character traits required to be a successful participant are similar to those that will promote a successful life after high school. I'm sure if you were a part of athletics when you were in school, it was a part of your life, whether it, or if it was an activity that you did in school, it was a part of your life, and it's kind of always going with you. That's the kind of the, the premise we're looking at here, and that's the idea that we're looking at. Team philosophy, and this is my, I use this in my classroom, so if this sounds kind of elementary, I apologize, but it's what I use in my classroom. And team stands for together everyone achieves more, okay? So I even have a couple of my students here. You guys know I talk about this all the time, don't I? Yeah. So we talk about being a team, okay? No one is any different from the team. We are all doing it together. This is a team thing. And that's the thing that I'm going to stress with the parents. It's a team thing. We're going to do this together. I'm not going to shoulder the load and say, you know, I'm going to do everything. And 
you know, I want I want you guys to be able to understand that I want you to help me with this. You know, this is a, this is a, a whole team effort. So that's why I, I, I use that team acronym. <coughs> My model for all for all of this is to encourage, not discourage, and that's what I was saying earlier. I want to encourage kids to play sports. I don't want to discourage them. Whether it might be grades, because they're not cutting it with the grades, so they say, ah, I don't want to play, I can't make the grades. I don't want that to be the issue. I want them to try. I want them to go out there and do what they can, do the best that they can. I want to encourage kids in the classroom as well as in sports. That's the important thing, because the two tie each other together. I mean, if you're not doing classroom work, you're not probably you know, doing what you should be out in the, the athletic field or wherever it may be. So the point to all that is to encourage students to do their best. Teachers will do that, okay? We do that every day in our classrooms. Parents, you need to do that at home as well. Encourage, don't discourage. It's gotta be all avenues. That's why I gotta put the street sign thing. I found that, I thought it was pretty cool, so. But it was one of those things where I was like, that's like a street, you know, we're, we're going down that street together, you know, and we don't want to like, you know, discourage, we don't want to go down a discouraged street, we want to encourage them. So we want positive results. The positive results is if we're going back to the team thing, we're working as a team, we're doing it together, okay? That's communication from me to you as parents, to coaches, to wherever it may lead, everybody's going to communicate so we all are on the same page. Things a student will learn from school activities and sports. The team matters more than the individual. Okay? And that's going back to that team concept. Saying, together as a team we're going to do this. It's not an individual thing. Okay? Achievement comes as a result of adequate preparation. And I can even think about it in my classroom. If I'm not adequately preparing students, they're not going to achieve. Okay, so we have to adequately prepare our student athletes the same way as we do in the classroom. We've got to make sure that they're ready to go. <coughs> Control, perseverance, and calm under pressure are vital elements of a person's character. Okay, we have to keep the, the idea that this is fun. Okay, it's fun to play athletics at this level. Okay. We're keeping it at the fun. This is fun. We don't have to worry about the score at the end of the game or you know how many points you scored or anything like that. It's just making sure that we had some fun and, and doing it together. Constructive criticism is infinitely more valuable than empty praise. Okay? <coughs> it is through competition we learn about our strengths and our weaknesses. I talk about that one all the time, even in my own, you know, in my own job as a, as a teacher, I learn about my strengths and weaknesses all the time. And it, it, it's, it's a funny thing, because there's days when I'm just, you know, I can be absolutely frazzled by the end of the day, and there's times where I can be absolutely like, man, that was such an awesome day, I can't wait to go home and tell my wife, and like, you know, I'll just be like, wow, oh, that was such a great day. So we learn about that, but through competition, we also learn about our strengths and weaknesses. When we're competing against others, we find out what we're good at, what we're not good at. How do we get better at it? Always reflecting on how we can go back and change those things or get better at things. My th one thing that I always think about to myself is always, I'm always, I always say there's always room for improvement. I always have room for improvement. I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm, you know, striving to do new things or try new things, get better at stuff. And that's, that's key. I think that's, that's key for even with our little kids. We have to make sure that all the way down to my, you know, my second graders, you know, we're always striving to do better things in the classroom. <coughs> Excuse me. Real self-esteem comes by effort and achievement. And if along the way you have some setbacks, that is part of the process. So it's, hey, making sure that even if you, even if you have a setback, and it's part of the process. We're going to learn. We're going to learn from it. We're going to grow from it. Pardon me. I get caught real fast when I'm talking. All right. 
This is the uh, our what we have right now as a mission statement at Our, our Lady of Lords. This is our athletic mission statement. Instruct student athletes in various aspects of competitive sports. Okay. Offer a Christian role model to excuse me to offer a Christian role model for competitive activity. To teach the fundamentals of the sport. To develop physical skills. To encourage the importance of individual effort and its relationship to and integration with team participation and cooperation. To develop a sense of justice, fairness, and concern for the emotional and physical well-being excuse me, of all participants. Sorry, I'll go back. All those are key, and I want to keep that as obviously we, we're, we're not changing anything there. That is, that is our mission statement. That is what we believe. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. From wherever it was developed from, whenever I, when I read that the very first time, I was like, that was spot on. That's, just, that's how I feel about athletics as well. Just a little side note. I, it's a story that comes to mind because it happened last night. My son is six. He's playing soccer last night. Kid on the other team gets kicked in the face with the ball. My son goes, ha, 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 and starts laughing. I pulled my son off the field. I didn't walk on the field. I just kind of, you know, motioned for him to come off the field. And I told him, I said, you need to go over and apologize to that kid. Because you don't know how you made that kid feel. And that is key for me. We don't want to do those kinds of things in competition. And to me, I'm teaching my son a, a good point. And it's that last one right there. To develop a sense of justice, fairness, and concern for the emotional and physical well-being of all participants. It was part of what, I mean, it made me, it struck a chord with me last night. I was like, that's part of our mission statement. And I just did it last night with my son. I was like, wow, <laughs> you know. So that's the kinds of things that we can do as parents when we're sitting in the stands or we're coaching, okay, when we're doing those, those activities. These are the things that we can incorporate with our children, even if it's with a different team somewhere else. It doesn't matter. These are, these are huge and they're key, and I think they're just, they're fantastic. Okay? And moving forward, they're going to be just great. Okay? If you have a concern to discuss with a coach, I, I always have to bring this up because I'm always like, I was a, I, well, I, a little background on me. I coached basketball for 24 years, all various levels, junior high, high school, college. Um, I was a football coach for a few years. Not my forte. I mean, I, I know football, but I'm, it's not my forte. Baseball coach for a couple years. I was a baseball player in high school. I was pretty good. I was, I mean, that's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. Anyways. <laughs> um, but every time I think about this, I think about my own well-being as a coach. When I was a coach, how would I want to be handled? How would I want to handle situations? So this is, this is what I kind of brainstormed and came up with and decided that I, I felt this was pertinent here. Please do not confront the coach before, during, or after a game. Coaches are there to coach, okay? They're doing their best. They're going to they're volunteering, whatever. They're there, okay? They are there to help guide your children, okay? So I'm going to keep going from there. Call the school office and have them contact the coach, and the coach will contact you to make an appointment. So this is something that's going to be implemented for the you know the next few years, hopefully. That if you have an issue. I want you to call the school office. Mrs. Spence will take down the information. I've already talked to her about it. She was like, yep, I can do that. Okay? She's gonna, she's gonna take the name down, she's gonna contact the coach, <coughs> the coach will contact you, and you will get together with the coach, maybe even myself to be there if need be, if you have a concern, so that we can talk it out. Okay? <clears throat> if the situation does not approve, call the school office again. To have them contact the athletic director, me, okay? And the athletic director will set up an appointment, and I will meet with you, and we'll try to resolve it. Hopefully, we'll, we, we, we will already, we won't even have to get to that step. But if it needs to get that far, we'll take care of it, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been in a lot of different situations. I'm, I'm a talker, as you can already probably tell. I'm just slapping my jaws right now. <laughs> but I, I talk. And I'm a, I'm a person that wants to talk about things when the, an issue arises. Anybody that has had a child in my class, if you have issues or if you have a, something you want to talk to me about, 
I always say, feel free, contact me. I am there for your children. You know, that's what I do. And that's what I'm going to do in situations like this as well. I'm here for these kids. This is all about the kids. This isn't about me. This is about making sure that we do the best thing in, in all situations. And anything we can do, we can talk about it. Okay? We can, you know, it, it, whatever it may be, I, I can talk to you about it. I, I'm totally fine with that. And then I had to add this on there because it was something that my wife and I were talking about one night. And I just said, this would be good to put on there. The myth is that if I talk to the coach, my kid will never get a chance to play. And I honestly used to think that. I used to think that as my own, like, when I was a player, when I was an athlete. Because my dad would always say, well, I'm going to go in there and talk to the coach. Yeah, don't do that, okay? Because if you talk to him, you're going to make him mad, and he's not going to play me, all that stuff. And I kind of, I, that's where I got that philosophy. I was like, that's that's I, I was I was always aware I was always afraid my dad was going to go in there and nobody I mean, you, have, you have to know my dad <laughs> he's he won't say anything unless it just gets to him gets to him builds up and then boom, off goes the roof so then there's all having to pay anyways so he, he he's but he's a great guy I love him to death so I, I don't want to talk bad about him he's a great guy so but you know he would always he's backing me by saying. I'll go talk to the coach. You know, he's saying, I'm supporting you. You're my son, I'm supporting you. But at the same time, I'm saying, Dad, you're not in the right frame of mind to go talk to him right now, so let's just kind of put this down and let's just leave it for right now and see if it gets better. If it gets worse, well, you know, well, maybe we'll have to talk to the coach. I don't know. My dad never talked to any coaches my whole high school career, my whole college career. He never talked to anybody. So. <laughs> We were fine there. I guess maybe I was just good at de-escalating him and not making sure he blew his top, but so um, only he blew his top at me, of course. But but anyway, that's just like I said, another story. So the the myth there is like I said, if you talk to the coach, my kid will never get a chance to play. That's just a myth. You can talk to coaches. Janelle, you're a coach, right? Do you care if a parent comes to talk to you? Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you know, I mean, we have some coaches in attendance. I mean, would you feel weird if a parent walked up to you and, and talked to you? No. You should feel fine with that and comfortable with that, able to handle the situation. So, and that's why you're doing what you're doing. Appropriate concerns to discuss with the coach. <coughs> Excuse me, I got to go through the water again. Physical, emotional, and, and or mental treatment of your child. That's kind of explanatory. It's self-explanatory. I mean, it, that's it, it's important. If, if your child is unhappy, whatever, and you want to talk to the coach about it, that's fine. Uh, but it's the treatment of your child. If they're if the coach is going off and, and saying things to your child that they shouldn't be saying, then that's something that maybe I need to step in as an athletic director and talk to them about. But I know, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure we don't have coaches here that do that, so I think we're pretty good there. So, what we have to talk about ways to help your child improve. That's key with me. Everybody has something to improve on. I talked about that earlier. We all have things that we can get better at, okay? And that's key because everybody can work on something. There's always a skill that you don't have that you can get better at. So. That's my that's my key right there. That's the, the huge that's my the huge point with me. You can go to a coach and say, Coach, what what can my child do to get better? You know, and the coach will say, Well, you know, maybe some ball handling or you know, on <coughs> ball, maybe it's you know they're not a strong center you know, or whatever. I mean, they can they can tell you what's going on. They can help you out there. Okay. Concerns about your child's behavior. If your child's on a team, acting out the whole time they're there and they're hard to control, you know, that's something that maybe you want to talk about. Maybe you're seeing it across the gym that your child's sitting there and, you know, putting his head on the chair and trying to do a handstand on a chair. I mean, that's something you need to discuss with the coach, obviously. Okay? Coaches are professionals. They make judgments and decisions based on what they see in practice every day. 
and what they believe is in the best interest of the team as a whole. OLOL believes those issues must be left to the discretion of the coach. So what I'm saying is, I back my coaches as an athletic director. Okay? I'm going to back them, okay? but I'm not going to say that I'm not going to listen to parents, because I am. I'm going to listen to what parents have to say as well. But when it boils down to it, I trust that my coaches are doing the best, thing, best for those kids and they should be backed by the athletic director and they should know they have that athletic director's back. Okay? Issues not appropriate to discuss with the coach. Playing time. I'm going to go right through these. Starting lineup. Other student athletes. By following the stated guidelines, OLOL believes that your child will have a positive experience and gain valuable tools to help them become successful and productive adults through participation in athletics and activities. That was kind of, kind of, I don't have to really elaborate on that too much. Okay. In the opinion of this athletic director here, a student athlete cannot have a good experience if the parents are openly critical of the coach slash sponsor. Okay? Issues parents have with the coach's strategy, practice plans, starting lineup, handling of other players, etc., are better kept to yourself and away from your student athlete. So as coaches, you have to go home and you gotta just let it go. You can't talk to you know, someone else while your children are overhearing it because they're going to hear that and they're going to think negatively then. And we don't want to keep that off to the side. We don't want to have that negativity. We want to make sure that we're supporting each other, okay? So my, my, my thoughts on that is, you know, try your best to just stay positive. Stay positive as best as you can. This is, I love this because I know this is going to be, a, I, I'm probably going to be, put down or I'm not going to be put down but this is going to be hard for if you need to vent come talk to me seriously if you need to vent you have an issue come talk to me just like I said before I'm open to talking to people I want to talk to you if you have something an issue or whatever it may be come talk to me make that phone call first though please <laughs> set up the appointment don't just come talk to me like boom right up, you know, come on it up to me make that appointment if you can but if it's something that really, really, really has to be discussed right away, I mean, I'm open to listening. I'm not going to say, like, you know, come run it up to me. You know, I can't talk to you right now. Make an appointment. Okay. I'm not going to do that. Okay. I mean, if it's something pertinent that we really got to discuss and we got to take care of it right away, no, I'm going to be there. I'm going to talk to you about it. But if it's something that can be talked about at another time, that's how I'm going to phrase it right away. Is this something that we have to take care of right now, or can we talk about this later? Okay. Athletic committee. This was our athletic committee this year. Okay. These are the members of the athletic committee. We have a few of them here too. Vicky, Dave, Kathy. Anybody else up there? Okay. All right. So that's our athletic committee. Okay. What I'm going to discuss is something that we have already discussed as an athletic committee. We have already decided on this to move forward. So this is something kind of exciting. But um, in my mind, when I, when I thought about what we did here as an athletic committee and as, as uh, I started um, March, did I start coming in March? Okay. I started attending meetings in March, <laughs> kind of taking along, being the, the extra guy, to kind of be an extra guy there. And that was fine, I loved it. I mean, I was kind of getting my feet wet, Dave, Vicky, Kathy, Amy, even Peg, um, all of them were very welcoming. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Okay. They were very welcoming to me. Um, if I had an idea, they were they were super open-minded about everything, which is what, what you need when you're when you're building a you know a, a team together. So, um, so we discussed this, and I'm going to talk to you about what an athletic committee is, what it is set up right now, and I'm going to talk to you about a booster club is, okay? So, the purpose and scope of the athletic committee is this. This is what we already have. 
Guide the athletic director in the planning of the athletic program. Review and revise the policies and guidelines of the Our Lady of Lords athletic program as necessary. Evaluate coaches and leads at the end of each sports season. Assist in fundraising. Review budget, approve finances, and expenditures. Okay? So now here's where I'm going to talk about both. Okay? Athletic club and booster club. This is what is in our handbook, what an athletic committee is. I'm not going to read it all to you because you, some of you may have already read it, but it basically states what we do as an athletic committee. Okay? Now, I didn't find the perfect booster club. Okay, I just went out there and found bits and pieces of what booster clubs are. And this is what I found to be the best. This is a booster club, the officer and their duties. Okay? There's a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, concession coordinator. Okay? It kind of looks the same. If you're getting what I'm going for here, right? Kind of looking the same. So here's what it is. Athletic committee versus a booster club. The chairperson that we have. Vicki is our chairperson. Vicki Dijard is our chairperson right now. In the booster club, her duties are the same as pretty much the president and secretary. So she's she's double dipping. Okay? So kudos, Vicki. <laughs> Good job. The public relations manager, which most of you have seen, I've put out, we're looking for a public relations manager. Okay? The public relations manager is the same, similar, I shouldn't say same, it was, fairly similar to the vice president. Okay? Treasurer, Dave Wall, is still the treasurer, okay? Tournament director, we don't have a tournament director. That's one of the positions that are open, and I'm hoping that someone steps up to, to fill that role. Concession coordinator, another role that we don't have filled that I would like to see filled, okay? And then your volunteer power coordinator, Kathy Koken. And I, the only reason I put the question marks here is because at a booster club, I wasn't sure if they had a person who did volunteer hours. I didn't know how they worked that, but I don't know if they did volunteer hours, but I couldn't find anything on it, so I just kind of left it with that the question marks. So, as you see, the transition from an athletic committee to a booster club should be smooth, and the job titles could would stay the same. And when I rolled this out to the athletic committee, we were very open to it. We were open to it because it opens up the ideas of families, and families being a part of this. If you think of booster clubs, booster clubs are, if you have a child that's in athletics, you're part of the booster club. You don't have to have a fancy title, you're part of it. So you're welcome to come to meetings, you're welcome to share ideas with us. That's what we want. A boost, that's what a booster club does. If you've got a great idea about a fundraiser that you think would raise money for our athletics program, hey, I'm all for it, okay? I'm here to listen to those things. So, with that being said, I can tell them that we are now not no longer the athletic committee, right? We are a booster club. We're the Our Lady of Lawrence Booster Club, okay? And that includes you as well, okay? Yes? In the past, hasn't... Father Tim always been a part of the athletic committee too, so would he and or, you know, his successor be involved in the booster club as well? Because I know there were some policy things that he was involved with, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. through the athletic committee. We'd have to, we, we report to him, right? Yeah. Right? So we report to Father Tim. He, he, he wasn't, I don't know, he's not, he wasn't really in on decisions or anything like that, no. So he's not really in on decisions. We report to him what we decide, right? Okay, I'm just going to try to handle that. Okay, good. Does that, that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I thought he could kind of nick certain things if he, like, practicing at certain times uh, or whatever, tournaments being held at certain times or... How does it go? Pastoral Council. Pastoral Council. Father Tim and the Pastoral Council. Okay. So
So that's that's Father Tuma, the pastoral council. Okay. So, so they have some say on some things. Yes, I mean I'm not going to all, you know, make all land changes and we're going to, you know, leave them out of it because all the committees that are that are here, you know, the, the SAC committee, there's council, all those things we all have to work together too. So that's all part of it too. So I'm not saying that we're separating ourselves from anybody. You know, we're all working together on it. So. Okay, all right, good, thanks. So, what does that mean that we're now a booster club? Well, we want you, okay? We need you to make it go, right? We need all of you to help support and grow OL athletics, all right? Do not be afraid to ask how you can help, okay? Any of us, you know, and it's Kathy, Dave, Vicky, myself, anybody else that's, on, you know, on our, we're calling it the board of directors, correct? Board of directors? Yeah. All right, anybody that's on the board of directors that, the Booster Club, that's, you can ask us, okay? That's fine. You know, we're open to suggestions. The one key thing, you must be virtue straight, okay? You must be virtue straight if you're not. Um, you have to see Kathy, okay? You must be virtue straight. That's coaches, that's volunteers, any, anything that you do with the school, you know, even like I, it, it's parents that come in my classroom, you have to be virtue straight, okay? And if you don't know what virtues is, it's a, <laughs> it's a program, um, it's called uh, Protecting God's Children, so um, it's a program that you have to go through, and it's basically how to handle yourself and how to handle situations in classrooms with, with children, okay? Yes? Does that include, like, those the, the tournament directors and the session? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's everything, right? Actually, Scott, can I add to that? You bet. Um, and we just found out anybody that works concession stand, clock, I'm just using basketball, books, Anybody that volunteers in any way with athletics will have to be virtue That was going to be my next question because I thought I heard that wow. too. Because now if you, to, to, so you have to get your hours by helping. But you have, so you to, have to be virtue So basically this is a requirement for anybody that signs their kids up for athletics next year. Okay. We're a bigger, we're a lot of people on the list. Yeah, some of the older students will help with book or clock. Or the day of an event, a parent will get pulled out of the stands because there is nobody to do clock or book. Well, we're hoping that we'll have people that will be in place before we even have the events going. So we're hoping that we'll have those sign-ups and everybody will be in place before we have, have the events going on. So that's something that we're hoping to change. So. But does that include high school kids? You know, if you have freshmen, that could help out. I will ask because um, how they want to handle that because I know if you're a high school student helping with religious ed, there's a different type of, you don't do the virtues class or the background screen, but there's some other papers they have to sign. So I will find out. Yes. Just for the referees, especially thinking of the upcoming soccer season, they reached out to some other areas and they have a referee from our Islamico, so I just need to let him know what he needs to be in high school, college freshman, so. Yep. I, I mean, last year, I mean, Amy never brought it up, so if, if they need to, we'll have to get that done sooner than later. They're stressing it, like, even more. So the record is that get involved, either, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just stressing that, you know, everybody's virtue strength. I mean, it's, uh, it's even more so than what it has been in the past. You can't, it can't be a bad thing if it is. Adam, sorry. It can't be a bad thing if it be No. Uh -huh. Thank nope. you. Yep. Once, once you got it done, you're done. Yeah, you're done. You're covered. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You can do the background screen online. Contact me if you need information, but the class still has to be taken. Yeah, yeah, no, no, there's different things. So the next thing I want to talk about is something that's been really exciting for me as well. Um, the booster club myself. We've been talking about this and. Um, uniforms for next year. Um, first, we did order new uniforms for track and tennis this year. Um, Chris Steiner, tennis coach, and Janelle Trimble, <coughs> track coach, um, got new uniform tops. 
Okay. Um, so um, we did order some supports this year when we had the need, but um, for this next year we will really be ordering new uniforms for volleyball, soccer, and basketball. I brought samples to kind of show everybody because I'm just like super excited about them. They're really cool. Um, there was a lot of discussion though. We had to make sure that we were okay with, with purchasing them. Um, this is going to be a, a long-term uh, purchase, a longer term than what you would expect. Most times when you purchase uniforms, you're looking at every maybe three, four years, you're having some turnaround where you got to replace or even just get rid of them and, and buy a whole new set. This is more of a long term, and when I say long term, we're talking like 10 years if we take care of the uniforms that I'm going to be, you know, that we, I should say, I, that I'm going to be talking about tonight that we decided on. Um, they are sublimated, which means that the material has everything in, it's all put in, printed into the material. Nothing peels, nothing, you know, happens to them. Um, the old uniforms will be used as practice here or sold for nostalgia purpose, purposes, sorry. And we also have an OLOL pullover order zip jacket that we did with tennis this year. I know track is interested in it for next year. I'll show you that as well. Um, there's, different, there's different options for it. So, with that being said, these are the volleyball uniforms that we're going to be looking at for next year. I have to be, we keep going back and forth, not the booster club, but I've been talking to the girls, <laughs> and they keep going back and forth. The, the middle school girls keep going back and forth on what they want, whether it's the long sleeve or the cap sleeve. So that's something that we'll obviously have to talk about, but we're leaning towards this right here is the cap sleeve. Okay? So we're looking at that. But they'll have the lords on the front and our logo, our cavalier on the back. Okay? And that would look like this. Now the, the longest sleeve is underneath it, so I apologize. But this would be the short sleeve. I'll just tuck it in the longest sleeve. And if you think, if you look at it, like I said, everything is printed right into the material. There's nothing that you need to worry about. It's dry fit material, okay? So when it's too warm, I mean, it really keeps them cool. Okay? There's no peeling of numbers. There's, if you take care of this, you can get about 10 plus years wear out of it. So that's why we decided to go with the sublimating. It's a little more pricier than what normal uniforms are, but the investment is, you know, remarkable. Okay? Um, soccer, I don't have a soccer jersey here. This is what soccer was. We, we, I talked to them the kids again, and they decided that that was the one they wanted to get. Um, when I put it on there, the color looked a little different. But when I saw it, you know, um, when my my vendor showed it to me, it's it's the same color as our school. It just looks weird in the picture. So don't look at it as it's not our school color because it, it will be. So, you know, I need soccer uniform. And this is the basketball uniform. This is what I this is what I like about the basketball uniform. It is reversible. So you have your jersey, which is going to be this right here. The, this color on one side and on the inside and outside. When you flip it, it'll look like that. And the shorts are right here. And that's the short. The material again is all dry fit. And it's sublimated, so everything is right in the material. The shorts are, they're going to be they're, just the jersey. No, no, the shorts aren't. I have a pair of reversibles. You always keep sending them with me. I can't said, stop sending those with me because we're not getting the reversibles. We're just getting the regular shorts. So the shorts are just going to be one color, they're going to be the maroon. But you're still going to look okay with maroon shorts and a white top. You're still looking, in my opinion, you're still looking pretty sharp. So that's the 
if you want to come up and look at the material afterwards, I, I'm, I'm going to leave them up there for you guys to look at. Um, if you have questions on it, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, and then... Yes. Yep. So we're just going to go right across the board. It's going to be the same. Yep. Good question. Again, yeah, there's my information. But I'll, before I do that, this is the, the jacket that we did for tennis. Obviously, it wasn't blue. So <laughs> it was maroon, maroon color here. And then it had, um, oh, well, no, it said Lord's, Lord's Tennis. I'm sorry. It had Lord's Tennis. And then did it have, did it have the Cavalier in the middle? Okay. So it had the cavalry in the middle. All the kids liked them, I'll tell you, those are really nice sweatshirt because it's yeah. like this big saggy, I mean, it fits nice and tight. For our sport, it was awesome because the kids, unfortunately, we had to wear them for a lot of our, <laughs> our <laughs> meets. And the kids wore them almost every meet, and it, was, it wasn't like baggy, heavy, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like wearing big old sweatshirts. So those are really nice. That was worth the investment. Yep. So, and, and what I wanted to say off of that is we can order these for any sport. They've got it all set up where it says Lords and it's got the, the Cavalier there. You can get it for basketball. If you want to get one for yourself as a parent and you want to support your, your, your team with basketball or tennis or track or volleyball, you can get one of these. So, I'm, you know, I, I, I think that that's great because we need, we need to have some spirit wear. I mean, I know we have spirit wear, but I want to, I want to get more. I want to have more. I want to get our name out there, Lourdes, because people need to know. In the past, it's on our uniforms, it said Cavaliers. And when I thought about it, you know, after I accepted it, you know, I, I verbally accepted with Mr. Young about doing this, I actually went, I think I, about two weeks later, I was back in your office, wasn't I? And I was asking a question of when we do uniforms or when we do things, could we be, could we put Lourdes on it instead of Cavaliers? Because that's our school. I mean, yes, we're the Cavaliers, but I want to be known, be known, be known as Our Lady of Lords. I don't want to, I want to, I want to be known as just the Cavaliers. Cavaliers could be anybody, you know. I want that name out there. That people see that and they say, "Hey, that's a great team right there. They got a great coach. They do. They're a really nice bunch of kids, you know." And when they see these jackets out in a boat, and they, they say, "Hey." That's a great school. Those kids that come out of there are great kids. That's what I want from this. You know, not that I want to make tons of money, you know, selling sell things, but. Did you say those are going to be individualized for the sport? You, I can. Or could we do like, like one that says Lord's Athletics because yeah, you know, yep. he's going to be in yep. every sport. Yeah, you, can do, have to buy you can do anything right. I can put anything on there as far as Lord's. I can put athletics, I can put basketball, I can put tennis, I can put, I can put, I can put anything. I mean, you can put all the sports on there if you want. Right? <laughs> if you really want to go fancy. So, um, no, you can't wear them in school. I, I haven't. I haven't. Somebody can talk to about it. Yeah. I, I haven't really talked to Mr. Young about that yet. So, but that's a discussion. I'm, I'd like to be able to have spirit days, spirit wear days, and things like that oh, as we as game we go forward. Yeah, that's that, that's that's the kind of idea that I have. Yeah. But I just haven't. I mean, Mr. Young hasn't heard that exactly. from me yet, so I'm sorry. Can you make an appointment? I will. Make an appointment. <laughs> I will make an appointment. <laughs> no, it's it's just a regular shirt. Just a regular shirt. No, no collar. No color like this. No more. No, this is like a regular t-shirt. No, good question. Mr. Farm is not It's solid maroon. It's not reversible, correct? Right. Because often the um, St. Bernard's has a red and a white team. Or they always let them know at a time, so they exchange. Change. Right? Yep. So, okay. Yep. It's no just going to be solid maroon. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Dave. Uh, one other feature you yeah. mentioned with the basketball group is it's oh. the same uniform or jersey from the lower grades all the way through the upper grades. So thank you. sizes. We, we can order multiple sizes, so if we have a lot of smaller kids in the grade or bigger, we can we have plenty of uniforms to go around, yep. and we won't have that issue anymore with safety uniforms. Yep. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate yep. you adding that. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. So, with that, that's the end of my presentation. Um, if there's any other questions, feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. But that's all I pretty much have, folks. I hope you can.
feel a sense of, you know, we're, we're coming together on this, we're going to be a team, we're going to be, it's all of us working together on this, and it's not, you know, that we're a separated entity. We, we want to hear from you. We want, to, we want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. Because I'm not going to make all the decisions. We are going to make the decisions. Okay? We are going to do all these things together. And I stress the word we. Because it's going to take all of you to make this successful, not me. Okay? I'm not coming in here to just change everything and make everything better. Amy did a fantastic job with what she did. Okay? And I'm just coming in on the back side of that, and I'm just trying to do what we can do together and keep this moving. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming out and listening, and I hope it was beneficial to you.